fix uh, Cambridge. That's and, uh, so I can get the curious stuff. So I'm using a smaller setup, which I can use a smaller power. And then smaller. I can still get everything in it, so it will be spread if you're walking around. This was the old um, entrance that I used to have for my studio when this was all one big studio. And now this is Arlene Daniel, my friend who does beautiful work. And she joins us for our Tuesday, you know, little meetings or the model sessions. And oh my God, I just love this little chicken. Arlene Daniel Fine Art. Yeah, she is a, she used to be a pediatric nurse and now she's retired and just dedicating herself to art. And these are little gouaches. I love these. We're in the dark right now. I'm getting ready for my, um, this is a little pastel. I just love them. Oh, look at this. This is a plain air gouache. I mean, how wonderful. It's amazing how many wonderful artists there are. This is her little studio. And I thought I would just, this is our last model until we start up again in about six weeks. And I have to move this big thing into the, there's Scott bringing back our provisions. Good morning. From the bakery. So I moved this out, but this is really easy. I mean, this just glides out of my studio. So this is what I, my palette and all my you know paints and stuff. This is the studio I'm renting until the end of the month just to get myself forced to get junk out of here. So, you know, we used to go to Sawtooth, but now we're having it in my studio. And this is how Scott's gonna draw. He's gonna sit on this chair using that pad, the pad with his drawing on it. You know, and just put the, the drawing board on his knees, you know? The model's gonna be up there. We usually have the model on that little miniature stand, but we have a tall model today, so she, she doesn't need a stand. And I'm going to be sitting over here with my pad on my knees. I got some of my pastels set. And I actually am gonna try and film um, just, you know, kind of like, just film all my sketches and if some of them come out, I'll show you. I'm going to be using this uh, Dahlier and Rony, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Ebony Sketchbook Black. I bought this when we were in Cambridge and I actually just, I just like the size. So I'm gonna be using that. We're gonna have a very strong light on our model. And then later on, I'm gonna film some of my sketches better um you know from a good reference but now since we have a live model i'm just going to be filming my sketches and not her so scott are you excited for our last model session yeah it's always fun doing quick sketches yeah quick sketches of the amazing sabra it takes us about 10 minutes to set up and a while to put everything back but it was such an enjoyable day Scott is moving my lighting back. It is, I enjoy having it in my studio. And I'm gonna show you guys our drawings today. But um, it can get a little bit packed and a little bit toasty. I'd love to be able to keep these doors open, but we have to put a screen, something, so that, I mean, the building is pretty quiet, but still, I wanna be able to like, not just have someone walk down the hall and be completely surprised by a nude model. Trying to also figure out the best way to light my palette and my easel. Guys, we're still figuring it out even after all these years that we're doing. I also want to show you, see how, remember I've showed you before, but this is like the very strong light that we get gorgeous lighting on our figure models. It is very much like a movie light. So if you're gonna do figure model and you really want beautiful lighting, you guys kind of need to get these stronger lights these sort of narrow they're like 
I'm, I don't know. These are old, man. These guys are probably they're like 15. Airy. Airy. I know, but they're probably like 15 years old, right? Or oh, more. Yeah, probably more. I had these in. Yeah, you Chicago could probably. Two oh, films. holy this cow. This is the type we used at Columbia College. They still use these when okay. filming. Probably so, yeah, they probably have a similar now. version of it. Um, here, I'm going to show you. Like, I'm gonna, if I turn the light on, I'm going to show you how strong it is. See how incredibly powerful that spotlight is even on Scott? So when it, it rains down on somebody, you get gorgeous lighting. I still have to figure out how to hide all this junk. These were my first couple um, figures. These were five minute. I think in the very beginning, I'm always trying to figure it out. Like, how do I block these in? Um, you know, you don't have a lot of time to think didn't realize that I was using paper that was going to face each other. So unfortunately, you know, it's best to probably have some sort of glassine or something so that they don't um, touch each other. So the beginnings were like five minutes. After the first um, 25 minutes, I realized that that gray wall was just too bright. So I went and got a black cloth because I, I personally like my shadows to just completely disappear into the background. I just don't want to have to look in there, especially when a uh, pose is so, so quick. Oh, this just looks way too strong. Just want to disappear that a little bit. I was going kind of staying a lot in pink. Sometimes I was using a very dark, very soft, um, <laughs> I see things when I like a, a strong edge that like just disturbs me in the video. Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about that. I think I then we went up so we did fives, tens, thirteen, and then um, an eighteen minute, and then at the very end a uh, twenty two minute. Sabra is just epitome of a great. See, I, the face looks so weird. I, that's why I'm like, I feel like our senses as humans, we will go to the head and if there's anything wrong, like this was my 22 minute and I really took my time. So I did not, you know, do, I, I kind of gave up maybe a couple minutes early and my shoulder was getting a little bit tired, but very much just a landscape. And there you go, there's my poses, and I'm gonna show you Scott's now. So these would be Scott's five minutes. So we, we kind of sit on the opposite side of the room. He tends to not um, do the background like I do or have the shadows disappear. He always kind of outlines exactly what the model's doing. I really like that one in the upper right-hand corner. So you're just using those like really dark red um, new pastels. And then using white chalk. Well, now you went to more of a brown and a yellow ochre. Fun. I love these these lines in the background. They look very much like music or static or something. So he, you can tell he starts off with this sort of medium uh, orange sepia and then just on top of it goes darker. It's easier to start off with a lighter or a medium value. I like how the different designs within the light makes it more exciting I mean once you actually get the drawing then just making those larger shapes more exciting oh, and this was we tend to have um, lying down poses at the very end I always have the model stand for the first 25 minutes and then and then, you know, you kind of do the sitting, and then as the very, very end, you do the very longest lying down pose.
Nice. Our last quick sketch of this session and we'll start up again at the end of October. Hello. <laughs> oh man, this is so interesting. There's some more buffalo over there. Hope I took the right turn here in the museums up this road. But we'll see. Holy cow. guys I've got some yeah. interesting ones, but I'll try to find something that, you know, 25, he was 50 years old. Okay. That's how old he was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'll be. <laughs>
we're walking through the Wake Forest campus and uh, I guess marching band or drum band, it seems like drummers, are practicing. I think it's like homecoming festivities, there's lots going on here. Scott is going to have his unveiling of his commission, so we're just here walking around. show you some of the grounds of Wake Forest. Definitely something is happening. We're so out of it, but we think uh, homecoming stuff. This is Wake Chapel where they have a lot of famous speakers and concert stuff. We've been there to see things. So this is the unveiling. This is the law library at Wake Forest. I'll show you um, the other painting that Scott did in the hallway. I think the other one is somewhere. I'm gonna go see if I can find it. I'll get a better picture of it. I'm going to come video the painting. You know, paintings look a little bit darker when they don't have a spotlight on them. I think Scott will post close-ups. He didn't want to post it until the painting was um, shown, oh, unveiled. So pretty. So this is where the paintings hang. Now, to be fair, the paintings should be on that wall so that they get light because they do not have any spotlights. Jane Aiken. Well, but I mean, it's gonna be a little dark down here. So you can see some of the past portraits, you know, kind of, let's just say, um, traditional. Oh, and Scott, look at this gorgeous frame you put on it. Oh well, no. I had that in the studio. And I know! The, pa the frame we just put on is very, very she simple. Just really liked this but, one, so, yeah. um, so this was the last Dean, and Scott loves to have his models kind of in motion, talking with hands. And this particular lady really wanted my Angelou, um, Virginia Woolf. And who's that? Oh, I'm drawing a blank oh, on the name. Just now, a, historical it's a, it's a historical person. historical famous woman uh, who fought for, you know, uh, oh, women's the rights and okay. all of that stuff. And yeah. she wanted specific flowers, which yeah. Scott never paints, so that's fun. It was real fun. Yeah, she was a wonderful person, but. Yeah, and, uh, she wanted, she definitely wanted to be smiling because usually Scott probably wouldn't naturally do that. But I do feel. 2019. I do feel like the, the painting you just did should, is, the frame is a little. Maybe too simple. I made it smaller because <laughs> yours was a lot bigger. So this paint is going to be where his, his new painting is. And they're having a reception outside to celebrate Jane. She's an amazing person. Just hearing about all the things she's done kind of like makes you feel like, am I doing anything with my life? So this is inside the building. So this is um, the dinner, I guess, probably for the law school. Now the painting, oh, here it is. This is the other painting Scott did.
And this was a posthumous painting of a very beloved, um, I, I guess, teacher or what? She, you know, she was a, a law teacher. Okay. And she is the one who got the funding to build this for the students. This whole yeah, and there. she loved gardens. So yeah. Scott loved being able to do this sort of abstract background. And but he had, she, had, you know, Scott had to paint the um, painting from a photo because she had passed away already. But wow, Scott, you did so well. Yeah. And everyone really likes this painting, so that's why that is a cool the thing. other people wanted their work. See, this has better light because yeah. you get some nice of the light. windows. I feel like, um, yeah, no, this this definitely has better light down These here, unfortunately. Here I know this was, um, this school could definitely hang more art. There's a lot of walls. Um, I remember coming here and seeing this. Now, this was a local artist. Look at how she framed it in these boxes. Because I think they were all like maybe homeless people. But you know, she did this a long time ago. Um, I think it's, oh, 1991. So, you know, before a lot of people were doing these type of things. I believe they were all done for life. So Anne Kessler Shields, so she passed away in 2012. Samaritan Guess. No, oh, I mean, wow. I remember seeing this and really, really liking it. Yeah. Oh my God, look at that little girl. They're all done in 1991. Wow, oh, and look at that one. Yeah, these are really great. These are really great. I'd never heard of this artist. You know, even though we live here, we don't know a lot of the um, artists that live maybe in town. And But yeah, no, I remember being really struck by this, this art. Yeah, it's big. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that was fun. So, they're getting ready for their dinner. You can just play around with it, and you can. And I like to move things oh, back and forth. Like and there's many different ways but. you can use stuff. <laughs> what? Look like at this little painting that she did in me. How cute. I love how you use your little Q-tips. <laughs> As you get some things that are super literal, like you have all of these lines, that's where I love, I love pulling things together. You still have some of it there. I'm editing one together right now that I did of a little girl on a horse. That's going to be for the auction at the end. So you see how you, 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 you can leave what you have in the that is a lot of paint. So these are the brushes that Scott's using. <laughs> um, ivory. Eggler. Yep. It looks very yellow on the screen, but not as yellow. Oh, um, it's just. We're having fun with our fun model, Lewis. I've, I've shown him on another video from YouTube, shown his studio. Yeah. He was showing me his YouTube videos, showing him to the class. Oh my gosh. So you can go to his uh, channel. He's really fun. All right, I'm going to attempt to show a bit about using acetone here. So here is the acetone that I'm going to use here, uh, Parks. Uh, it's just from the uh, hardware store. And I've got some, uh, some dried 
um, what is this, Nitrium uh, powdered charcoal, or you can just save your charcoal. Now, notice I have my studio door open with the screen, and then I have this little uh, attic thing I put in, and then there's an attic fan, so it's blowing air out. And then I've also got a fan over here in my studio so that it blows across me. So it'll blow the air out and then up through there. So I won't be breathing any of it in. So let's see if I can do this. I'm not sure, we'll see. All right, so let's open this up here. And then I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here. Let's see if I can do this here with one hand. So you don't need a ton of it. And uh, then I'll close this back up so I don't smell it. And from where I'm standing here, I don't smell anything because uh, of the way I have the fan set up. All right, now I'm going to take some of this Nitrum. Let's see. And then this is a quick sketch here that I did uh, while we were in, uh, in um, Cambridge. And I actually just glued it to a wooden board, okay? Uh, I'll show you how to do that. What I, I did was I used a clear gesso, basically, uh, clear gesso, and so it's completely on here now, it's solid. I glued it with the clear gesso, but I left the paper surface so you could still draw on it. I sprayed this with some workable fixative, and so now I'm gonna put a little bit of this uh, charcoal dust on here, and then I will seal it and I probably paint on top of it. I'm gonna do another video where I'm gonna show that process. So, um, so here I'm just going to take, and I'm just going to put a little bit of charcoal on here. That'll give me something that I can work into here. You can see the fan is blowing a little bit, that doesn't matter. All right, so this gives me a little bit of something on there to work on to. So now I'm going to grab one of these uh, just bristle brushes and I'm going to just get some of this on here and I'm just going to splatter some of this on the dust that I've already got there. So you see how it kind of gives you a bit of a, of a texture. And this of course has gotten a little dirty because I already had, I think it wasn't a clean brush, I had some uh, charcoal on there. So, but there's not too much. So that'll just brush it. Now you can just splatter like I'm doing here, or you can brush. Uh, I'm brush, I'm gonna use actually a little fan brush. Let's grab this here, and we'll, we'll put some um, of this acetone on it, and then we'll just brush some of this in here. You can see how you can get some interesting little patterns and designs. Go back to here, do a little more splattering. Now you can go and you can actually take actual stuff off of the palette here if you want to make more solid brush strokes. So where would I want to do this on here? So maybe I'll do a little bit of some solid brush strokes here. So I like to have some of what's showing through there, and I'll get a little bit more on here, and I'll actually splatter with more um, stuff on there. So you see how, to me, this is starting to get a little more interesting as far as having a little bit of um, variety and not just a drawing on paper with that. Now you can do as much or as little of this as you, as you want, and it just depends on what you're going for. All right, so that kind of gives you an idea there. And because this is, it's not, I mean, this is, because this, this stuff evaporates right away, you don't have too much of an issue with uh, the paper bowing but the fact that I've already glued this on here, it really makes it so that it, it doesn't uh, affect it so much. 
Yeah, fun. It just gives a little bit of variety, more abstract sort of feel to it, at least in my opinion. It's challenging to do this at the same time as keeping the camera on it, but it's kind of, kind of fun. All right, so there you go. So that, to me, that that gets a little more interesting of a thing, and you can kind of see close up some of these patterns. Now, once this is dried, it dries very fast because this stuff evaporates right away, and that's one of the reasons why you don't want to um, you don't want to uh, breathe it because it's bad for you. But once it, it evaporates, let me see if I've got a new release around here. Get a needed eraser. This was the drawings we did this afternoon. Let's see here. This is from our sketch group this afternoon. And let me get a needed eraser out here. And I can show you here. If I can find one. Alright, so this one's got a bit of red chalk on it. But you'll see here now, if I want to erase something out, I want you to see here how, how it comes off pretty well. And that's because, that's because it has not soaked into the paper so much. So there's really dark ones that I put on, they don't erase out completely but they can come out. So you can still work this and erase things out to some extent. Now, if I use water with it, it doesn't erase out as easily because with the water, it soaks into the paper more because it does, the water doesn't evaporate as fast. You see how you can make that a little more subtle and you can do it anywhere on the picture. So say you decided you wanted these feet to show through a little better. You can kind of erase out some of it and reveal the drawing underneath it. And as you get this cleaner, you can get it get it better. So you see how that starts to come back then. So yeah, it's kind of fun. And I, I would I sometimes will even just take a dry uh, paper towel and then I can kind of work it and make it kind of just you know soften things and lose edges like that. All right. Isn't that fun? And we've got some of that powdered stuff too. So you can work some of that in. It's just giving you that little bit more of a complexity that I like. A little bit more of that abstract and it's not necessarily so graphic and so together. See how that just softens it out a bit. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to, once I kind of work on this and get it right, then I'm going to actually seal it with some, with some spray or some uh, polyurethane or maybe more of that gesso, clear gesso. And then I can work on it if I decide I want to add some color or things like that. All right, so there you go. Yeah, I like these. I like the way he uses that white chalk. Makes it really dance. And you should see the uh, all the different pictures that everybody sent me. Oh my God! So he's just using this. Looks, like the lighting the, the looks general's chalk different. Way. The pose looks completely Isn't that different. Fun? Hey Scott, why don't you flip your pages for me? Want me to do it? You only have two pages. Oh, because you put so many on the page. Yeah. Was that our second time? Yeah. Yeah, that was the first, Ooh, first that one thing. looks like she's a ghost because yeah. she's so much lighter. The only one with white on it, yeah. Those are the fast ones, so. Uh, 
Scott. Scott always likes to make him look very Frizzetti, like almost like a superhero. Yeah, I thought that'd be fun. You though. know, like really exaggerated. angled, very exaggerated. And I like, I like that channel line. That's yeah, that's beautiful. Um, that's that's oh, so was that your only page? Uh, yeah, we just did two sessions. Oh, okay, you could show them. Sabra. I just been doing them one. So you giving me too. big hair again? Oh wait, no. That, these are these are older ones, and then he these are show her the newer ones. Oh right, I don't know if these are Sabra. I think they are. Yeah, yeah these are Sabra. Yeah. I can tell that yeah, hip. <laughs> This, this I was telling him how he makes you look like a superhero with the angles and the exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, look at my hair. I'm yeah. still getting yeah, used to it. Short hair. Okay, I'll move so that other people can see. Yeah, I think I got this one. Well, this one, it's funny. You make people look almost like they have sunglasses on. Yeah, she had such shadows yeah. from the light being so far up. Right. Yeah. This one was a very interesting I abstract that pose. one. Yeah, that was really. It fun was. One. It definitely looked modern artish. Mm -hmm. And I stretched her a little oh, bit. Oh, you did. Look yeah. at you, stretching. Yeah, yeah I can tell you stretched her neck. neck longer, and I made this stuff longer. It was kind oh, of okay. interesting. I liked the, the kind of the. Uh, look at those feet. They're very. Yeah, yeah that was they're fun. very graphic. Yeah. And her face. Yeah, <laughs> she's fun. Oh, nice. So it looks like you start off with like that sort of light brown, and then on top of it you go to that red. Yeah, I put the white. Oh, you gave her some really strong shoulders. Yeah, she does have pretty strong shoulders. I guess because of all of her. Oh. Let me put this sideways. Okay. <laughs> was this this was the last one? That was the last one. Yeah. Look at her face. It looks funny. Yeah. No, I don't think this is a great one. But. Oh, I like it. I, I like it a lot. I think the face, if you just maybe yeah. de-emphasize some of her eye, maybe. Yeah. Just like softened it a little bit. But no, I like it. Yeah. Good practice. Mine, I couldn't even do it. I was so tired. I'll show some of these uh, better. So that's my abstract one. So I was doing a lot of blues today. I've been doing so many like purples. And so just playing with like, but that blue, that kind of cobalt pastel, which I think, I don't know if it's a Chirot, but it was so, like some pastels are so like vibrant. Like you don't have, you know, they just, they're not super strong um, values, but just the potency. So I kind of pooped out towards the end. When you're out of practice doing quick sketches, it's like, Extremely physically exhausting. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. I'm always thinking that maybe I will do stuff with them, but and then no one will shot the dust. Oh, just putting my studio back after a quick sketch. It's Halloween. 